Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and finally welcome back to an edition of the Back Pages, the series where we look at the back pages of those Monday morning newspapers, we see what they're saying in the world of football and we react to give our opinions to it. Of course Celtic are in a situation right now where they're looking for a new manager which means the papers are loving it, names are being thrown around willy nilly and columnists are having their say and you know ultimately we're here to give our reactions to that. Rangers on the other hand, a very different situation over there, they've just won the league and um, the praises have been sung by everyone and quite rightfully so but we're going to look to see what the pages are saying anyway in this week um, a lot of news that you know is, is, is intriguing to say the least and a lot of talk about those managers we spoke about the podcast yesterday so let's get into that <laughs> right then before we get any further with this video I just want to quickly add this isn't a Hamilton shirt, it, even though it, you might start seeing hoops, it's not a Hamilton shirt, I swear to God it's not. Um, I had the feel today that I was going to go over to Lidl to buy the papers and people would think this is a Hamilton shirt. No, in these parts, it's a Granada shirt, it's the one that I got with the mystery football box thing that I've done on this channel. So I don't stress, it's not a Hamilton shirt. Anyway, let's get into talking about the back pages today. Both the Record and the Express have, have got kind of a similar back page and that's not Celtic related, of course. It's not always going to be Celtic related despite the fact this season we've been making the back pages for all the wrong reasons. Today's back page in both papers is mostly focused on that man, Alfredo Morelos, um, talking about a sit-down conversation he had with Steven Gerrard which saved his season after the collapse of a big money move earlier in the season or back at the start of the season, I should say, in the past summer window. Um, and before I talk about what the actual story itself says, to look at this from a neutral point of view, just very quickly want to add, I mean, number one, it's, it's, it's refreshing to see Morelos on the back pages not painted in a, a, a bad fashion, you know, it's usually Morelos on the back pages once, like, once again like Celtic, for all the wrong reasons, but um, as a neutral here, it's quite impressive the season he's went on to have despite the fact that it looked as though he wanted away, it looked as though he was going to be leaving the club and then it kind of fell through. The, 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 the toll that it can take on a football player mentally um, you might not get the best out of them put it that way it's very bluntly said you might not get the best out of them they might not score goals they might not give you the, the, the goods that you want um, but Morelos this season has been once again very good for Rangers um, a key part an instrumental part to the success of seeing him winning that league title so fair play to, to Gerrard for you know kind of putting his head down to work and making sure that he was still a vital part of the system and, and giving him the time I mean it's never easy when a, a move breaks down so it looked destined he was going to go away I didn't think he would be here this season I thought he would have been off to you know the likes of um, Germany or, or Italy I think those were two of the nations he was getting linked with moves to uh, especially Italy I'm sure somebody like Fiorentina was in for him um, you know that's it's like one of those ones now that he's kept him here and, and we, we understand as fans sadly that Scotland is a bit of a lesser league it's understandable that players don't want to spend their careers here but for him to put his head down and get to work and score the goals and do what he's done this season uh, is a real credit to Gerard from a neutral point of view um, but I want to talk about one main story on the back page let's talk about that man up there I don't know if you can see him from there he is Roy Keane let's talk about Roy Keane who we had a conversation about yesterday um, on the podcast we talked about him, me, Ryan and Calm. if you've not seen it yet feel free to go back and watch it we spoke about, uh, about Roy Keane and his apparent new desire to get back into management and to get back in with Celtic uh, and that's what's making the back pages as well in the newspapers today that has been a big talking point in the world of Scottish football over the past few days Roy Keane who's been a pundit now for the last few years wanting to return to Celtic perhaps um, after being a former player to now manage the club um, it's kind of split fans apart um, a lot of people on the side of which is my side of no don't want him anywhere near the club, don't want him to be a manager. And then some people who are kind of like, ah, do you know what? He'd come in, he'd be the often Terry and we need. He would uh, get the players in order, he'd be brutally honest. All these different things about Roy Keane's personality is what people want to see in a Celtic manager. And that's why some would like Roy Keane. Roy Keane has not managed a football team since the last decade, I think. 2009, 2010, I think was the last time he managed a football team. Why in God's green earth should we allow Celtic to be his first project back? as a manager. Now I understand Celtic are going to go through a rebuild and I understand I've urged fans to be patient in that rebuild and once again Roy Keane can be one of those guys who can be patient with. But I think for a guy who's been mostly an assistant for the, the, the last decade and then a pundit to come into Celtic with no real, I don't think, pedigree behind him in, in terms of 
I don't know, it's just, you look at some of Enzo Maresca, right, who I know people are going to compare my thoughts with, because I've been this big kind of rally behind Maresca, rally behind how and such, Maresca's never managed a senior club before, he's never done it at the highest level yet, I'm like, oh, give him a chance, we don't give Roy Keane a chance, and I know people will try to say it's a bit kind of contradictory, but... I just think that Roy Keane is a very backwards appointment for the club and I, I won't be able to get away from that mindset. Um, I like Roy Keane, he's one of the greatest captains in Premier League history, one of the greatest players in Premier League history, he's won it umpteen times in Man United, um, he's went on to assistant of course, the great Mark O'Neill. But I just, you, you see the way that Rangers fans are reacting to the news that coming out about Roy Keane wanting this job. That shows everything. They are dying for Roy Keane to get this job now because they know it is... I think Neil Lennon's a better manager than Roy Keane. Simply put, I think Neil Lennon's a better manager than Roy Keane. Um, and I don't think we should be going anywhere near Neil Lennon. I want complete change. Roy Keane, to me, doesn't scream like a, a kind of project that we're going to go through here at Celtic. You know, this new director of football, this new CEO, get into the modern game. Doesn't seem like a Roy Keane move for me. And I'm just very against the move. It's in the papers. Excels, Hartson and Varga back Irish superstar to be a big hit in the parkade dugout if owner Desmond decides to swoop for old pal Keane. And there's the two words right there which put me off it even more. Old pal. I've said for months now we need to get out of this old pals act at Celtic. The fact that we were looking at Strachan and O'Neill to come in and steady the ship. The fact we even gave Neil Lennon the job and the, 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 the showers. It was all part of an old pal's eye. Do we not learn from our mistakes? We can't afford to give Roy Keane the job in my eyes. It has to be changed. It has to be someone modern thinking. It has to be someone who I think is, is going to come in and revamp the club. I don't see that happening with Keane. Um, I don't see what happens with Keane. Look, he's great entertainment value in the television. He tells it how it is. But some things are made for TV and some are made for the Celtic dugouts. I don't think Roy Keane's made for the Celtic dugouts. I wouldn't mind Roy Keane coming in in an assistant role or a coaching role at some point. But I think that time's gone. He had the chance. He was in the list before Ronnie Dyer and he turned it down. Dyer was meant to be Keane's assistant and he knocked it back. So why now? Why should we continue to move backwards as a club? Move forwards. That's the message that I just want to try and get out there. I know there's a lot of people who want to back Keane, but I just don't understand it. Yes, he done well with Sunderland. Um, I think he, he was unlucky at Ipswich. Ipswich have been in a lot of financial problems at the time as well, but yeah, this is over a decade ago, man. That's a long time in football. Things have changed. It's actually dramatically changed. I think be between 2010 and 2020, you're arguably looking at the era where football's changed the most, and that comes especially with money. But the game has changed massively with technology, with, with money as I've said, um, with how players have adapted. You know, the game is massively different now from when Roy Keane was playing and managing. And I just feel like it would be such a backward step for us to go there. I can understand why fans like this whole brutally honest side of them and kind of old school thought because it takes you back and it's nice and it's a little bit of nostalgia and such. But that's not how football works now and I think we have to escape that. Um, we need to escape that mindset of brutal honesty wins or whatever, no, we need results, we need a manager who's going to turn around the fitness and such of the team and bring a new direction and work with a director of football, I think Roy Keane to me as well screams out a guy who'd like to work and make the decisions on his own and that doesn't really fit the model that Celtic are going to be going with, so I look, I know it'll be divided one but I, I feel like these opinions of former players, Hearts and Varga and then you'll probably see and Sutton and all that coming out with stuff as well, I think it just shows you that these are the same opinions that kind of held back the Celtic back this season when Neil Lennon was being backed. So why should we listen again? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's pretty annoying. And very quickly, the other story I want to touch on the record before we end. Stuck between a rock and a hard place is about Scott Brown and Alan McGregor. Getting on a little bit, of course. Scott Brown coming up, I think, for 36 years old. Alan McGregor coming up for 40 years old. Gels can't afford to let McGregor hang up gloves and Brown won't settle for being on the sidelines. History dictates there is no such thing as an irreplaceable in football. Keith Jackson, of course, big uh, columnist at the record with that today. And... Um, let's talk about Brown. Brown, who now uh, is coming to a kind of point in his career where it looks like he's dwindling to a close. Brown's contract is up at the end of the season. He's now been linked with the assistant role at Aberdeen if Stephen Glass gets that job. He could be on the way out of Celtic. Um, and this comes kind of bitter and sweet at the same time. Um, I don't necessarily want to see Brown leave the club. I, I like Brown a lot, and, and I know a lot of people will give me stick for that, and it kind of goes back against everything I've said about moving forward, but in terms of his 
career moving forward. I think he can be valuable as a coach and such. And maybe he should go to Aberdeen to learn. I think I'm just kind of sentimentally holding on to the idea that we gave him this big grand send-off after being our captain for the last 10 years. I kind of look at him as the McStay of my generation. You know, he's been there, he's always been there, he's been the captain, he's lifted all the trophies. He's just kind of an icon to me. So I, I kind of feel like I need to be in the stadium to say cheerio to him, you know what I mean? Um, but Brown is in that situation now where Celtic have a real dilemma because I don't think Brown will settle as Keith Jackson has alluded to here. I don't think he'll settle for being in the sidelines. I think Brown will want reassurance that he will be involved to some extent next year if he's still a player. Um, and I don't know how much that is, but I think he will want a hefty part in what we do next season. Can we offer him that? Yes, we can, but should we offer him it? Maybe not. Brown is one of those players who has been showing this season that we're perhaps getting to the end and in comparison to Alan McGregor who I think is valuable to Rangers and still has a place in that Rangers team despite his contract running out very different for an outfield player and it's very different when it comes to talking about Scott Brown and a Celtic side who need serious rejuvenation Rangers in a very good point just now whereas Celtic are on the other end of the spiral Brown, it's going to be a video in itself to talk about Scott Brown's future at Celtic I think that if he goes... I will, I'll, 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 you know, I'll, I'll applaud everything he's done at Celtic, but I will accept it's probably for the best of the club that Brown moves on. If he stays, I will be happy with it, but it has to be in the understanding for me that he's not going to be as big a role in this, this, this squad as what he has been for the last you know, 10, 15 years. Um, this is ultimately an area now we need to improve on. We see the likes of even Sorrow coming through, give him Brown's place. Even if we sign someone else, you see Shaw coming through as well. Um, and, and, and on a pre-contract signing Brown's place in the team is undoubtedly finished I think um, now it comes down to Brown whether or not he wants to stay uh, it's a real mind-boggling one it's one we're going to have to talk about in a video on its own but aye it's, it's a weird time going through all this change for Celtic uh, and finally we've got the Daily Express which once again has Alfredo Morelos highlighted in the back pages after his chat with Stephen Gerrard we've already spoke about the Austria and Scotland situation on the right hand side of the page I'm sure we'll talk about that more on Talk Scottish Football if you want to hear about that there more of the international stuff of course over there a lot of stuff on uh, Stephen Glass as we've already said with the, the, the chance of him going to Aberdeen and, and Cormac Dave Cormac if you will um, give him the job uh, and Stephen Welsh with a little article as well talking about the fact that the Celtic need to bounce back how big a part will Stephen, uh, Stephen Welsh play in that, that kind of bounce back for Celtic will he still be a starting player next season I still believe that we should probably look to improve in that area in centre half especially with Ayer potentially departing the club um, so it's a weird one but that's an interesting thing Stephen Welsh was in primary school the last time Rangers won the league so he's very much came through in a time where everything's sort of changing too and he can be a part of that um, but to what extent is he first team quality at the moment? Um, I've been impressed from what I've seen from Welsh, but I certainly think that there's ways to go. Um, and he uh, can get better, um, but we can get better as well. That's one will be a little more conversation on as time moves on too. But that about does it. We've spoke for too long. I've not even got the chance to go into the Express. I feel like a waste of time even buying it today. But you know what? We've ran a course today and the same story's kind of flagging up as, as always anyway in both papers. Scott Brown, uh, Roy Keane, the big talking points today in the back pages towards Celtic, Alfredo Morelos, the one dominating the actual um, page itself. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.